Hello, and welcome to Today in History for February 24th. I'm Michael Powell. Where were you on January 30th of 1968? I well remember where I was. I was in South Vietnam fighting the war. And on January 30th of 1968, the Tet Offensive started. And it continued for some time until... On February 24th of 1968, the Tet Offensive was ended as the U.S. and South Vietnamese troops recaptured the ancient capital of Hue from the Communist forces. Although scattered fighting continued across the South Vietnam for another week, the Battle of Hue was the last major engagement of the offensive, which saw Communist attacks on all of South Vietnam's major cities. As 1968 began, the third year of U.S. ground troop fighting in Vietnam, U.S. military leadership was still confident that a favorable peace agreement would soon be forced on the North Vietnamese and their allies in South Vietnam, the Viet Cong. Despite growing calls at home for an immediate U.S. withdrawal, President Lyndon Johnson's administration planned to keep the pressure on the communists through increased bombing and other strategies. General William Westmoreland, commander of the U.S. operations in Vietnam, claimed to see, quote, clearly the light at the end of the tunnel, and Johnson hoped that soon the shell-shocked communists would stumble out of the jungle to the bargaining table. However, on January 30th of 1968, the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese launched their massive Tet Offensive all across South Vietnam. It was in the first day of Tet, the Vietnam's Lunar New Year and most important holiday, and many South Vietnamese soldiers expecting an unofficial truth had gone home. The Viet Cong were known for guerrilla tactics and had never launched an offensive of this scale. Consequently, the U.S. and the South Vietnamese forces were caught completely by surprise. In the first day of the offensive, tens of thousands of Viet Cong soldiers, supported by North Vietnamese forces, overran the five largest cities of South Vietnam and a number of U.S. and South Vietnamese bases, one of which was my base. The Viet Cong struck at Saigon, South Vietnam's capital, and even attacked and for several hours held the U.S. embassy there. The action was caught by the U.S. television news crews, which also recorded the brutal impromptu street execution of a Viet Cong rebel by a South Vietnamese military official. As the U.S. and South Vietnamese fought to regain control of Saigon, the cities of Hue, De Lat, Can Tum, and Quang Tri fell to the communists. U.S. and South Vietnamese forces rec recaptured most of these cities within a few days, but Wei was fiercely contested by the communist soldiers occupying it. After 26 days of costly house-to-house -house fighting, the South Vietnamese flag was raised again above Wei on February 24th, and the Tet Offensive came to an end. In many respects, the Tet Offensive was a military disaster for the communists. They suffered 10 times more casualties than the enemy, and failed to control any of the areas captured in the opening days of the offensive. They had hoped that the Tet Offensive would ignite a popular uprising against South Vietnam's government and the presence of U.S. troops. This did not occur. In addition, the Viet Cong, which had come out into the open for the first time in the war, were all but wiped out. However, because the Tet Offensive crushed U.S. hopes for an imminent end to the conflict, it dealt a fatal blow to the U.S. military mission in Vietnam. In Tet's aftermath, President Johnson came under fire on all sides for his Vietnam policy. On March 31st, Johnson announced that the United States would begin de-escalation in Vietnam, halt the bombing of North Vietnam, and seek a peace agreement to end the conflict. The Tet Offensive of 1968. I was there, and it was quite a battle. For January 24th, oh, excuse me, February 24th, this is Today in History. I'm Michael Powell. 
Join me again tomorrow and see what that day will bring. Till then, watch this.